guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I want to talk about some things that I've been consuming. Podcasts, TV shows, uh, random apps that are like not writing related. Their intention was not to be writing related. And yet I have pulled stuff from them to help me with my writing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So <laughs> my hope in this is also that y'all will comment down below and let me know if you have any non-writing related resource that have had a big impact on your writing or on a particular story or even helped you to write a specific genre, such as my first resource, which is Bear Grylls. Now I'm only gonna sum up the part about Bear Grylls that I personally find helpful because he has done far and away some of the coolest stuff I've ever heard and some of the stuff I just don't even understand. But the main thing is that he's basically like the survival in instructor, right? My favorite specifically is Running Wild with Bear Girls, where he takes these celebrities and then goes on huge adventures with them. So it acts as like a way for us to get to know these celebrities better, but also really we're like being taught how to survive certain things. And as someone who writes fantasy stories, particularly sort of adventure fantasy stories set in a world that's not our own world, but a similar sort of world, it is so helpful. Which episode was I watching? Okay. I was watching the one with Bobby Bones recently. It was just on TV. And there's this part where they're trying to cross this river and he's using a stick, a very long stick to use as like stabilization as they cross and to put your weight into the stick and like certain ways to maneuver your body so that you can pass this huge flowing water. Okay, lots of my fantasy worlds have rivers in them and oftentimes, I don't know why, I like to write characters that are on the run for some various reason. And it would really help me to know these kind of tips and tricks on how to cross these rivers or how to scale down mountains when you don't have specific equipment or whatever else. And sometimes it's hard to look up specific things when the time comes for me to write the scene. So instead, watching Bear Grylls just floods my brain with all of this information and normally, when I'm watching a TV show, it floods my head with useless information, but this one helps my writing. <laughs> so if you have not watched Bear Grylls before on any of his shows, I highly recommend it if you're writing some sort of fantasy adventure, whatever. My second recommendation was actually inspired by a conversation I was having with Brooke Passmore and it's Zillow, the like app or website. It's the one where you can check out apartments, houses, real estate in a specific area. And now lots of writers use Google Maps to find specific locations in cities that they haven't visited before or they want a reminder of when they're describing them. But Brooke was telling me that the way she used Zillow is because she's writing a sort of historical novel set in like 1920s New Orleans. She's able to look up when the houses specifically were made so she can see if that house was there during the time period that her novel is set. So I think for historical novels, depending on the time frame, this would be insanely helpful. But I also use Zillow to kind of look up the inside of the houses. The times I've traveled to the Northeast, I've noticed that there's a huge difference between the houses up there and the houses we have here in Texas. Obviously the environment's so much different, so it warrants having different sorts of structures. But that also means that the insides tend to look different. Even just the style. Also, of course, Zillow tends to tell you the pricing of things so you can avoid a friend's TV show situation with Monica's hella nice apartment that there's no way she could afford. I know they tried to like make it make sense. It didn't make sense. <laughs> my next suggestion is actually this podcast that I've been listening to. Where's my Spotify? I found it. And it is the Startup Podcast. As much as we like to sort of romanticize the act of writing, at a certain point, writing eventually does become a business. If you want people to read your book, even if you don't want to necessarily sell your book, but you just want to get it into the hands of as many people as possible, if you want to be read, there's some amount of business sense that needs to sort of happen there. Not to mention if you're self-publishing or even if you're getting your book traditionally published, there's a lot of business that tends to go on once you've passed a certain threshold. And while the startup podcast has nothing to do with the publishing industry. It is about starting up a business and I think that that has a lot of parallels with someone starting up their writing business. So it's really fun to hear our hosts kind of try and pitch these Silicon Valley people as well as the struggle of naming their business. All writers can definitely learn about that with titling their books. There's also an episode about how to value your business which although not necessarily completely transferable to writing and publishing there's something to be said for just sort of absorbing this as you go along. 
I cannot recommend it enough. In fact, episode 10 on the Gimlet season is about mixing art in business. I'm super excited also for episode 12, which is about burnout, which I think a lot of writers experience. So anyways, yes, I think there's just something to be said for hearing a different side of things, something that seems usually analytical and yet still kind of going through these same struggles as a writer. My next suggestion, though I won't harp on this too much, is Hallmark. I've done a lot of Hallmark stuff recently. <laughs> but there's something to be said for the very formulaic nature of Hallmark movies that I think when you start to analyze them, you see the highs and lows and what absolutely needs to be in the movie in order to make it to the market it's supposed to be. And then trying to analyze that for your own book or within your own genre. It always gets me thinking. And also, as everyone says, you know, you can learn a lot from things that are bad. Bad movies, bad TV shows, shows, bad writing, bad books, you can learn a lot. So I'm just throwing it out there. You know, if I haven't sold you yet, I'm just, just take it. <laughs> now my final suggestion is not necessarily a specific like TV channel or a podcast so much as a blend of a bunch of different things. I love museums to get me inspired to write a lot of different things. There's also specific museums like because I'm writing a story that has a lot of pirate ships in it I try to find some that have a little bit of a focus on maritime but also just the history of people, the history of cultures can really help you to world build and there's something about having it all around you much like I love writing in libraries because I'm surrounded by books. There's something to be said for just soaking in the atmosphere and the environment of a museum and learning little bits and pieces along the way. Similarly, travel. I've talked before about how you don't even have to travel that far. Sometimes just taking a road that you're not used to can let you see something new and spark an idea. I say as someone who got an idea for a story because I once got stuck on a ride at Disney World. Also, I'm someone who's basing a story entirely in Nashville and wanting Nashville to sort of serve as its own character. Also visiting Nashville for that very reason with my friend Brooke Passmore who now I've mentioned twice in this video. <laughs> but those are just some of the things that I've been consuming recently that have really gotten me to think about writing in a different sort of way. They've really helped to inspire me and help me infuse life into my stories that I would not have thought they would do that. I wouldn't have expected it. Yeah. <laughs> Please do comment down below and let me know if there's anything like that for you. A non-writing resource that's actually really helped your writing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all very soon with a new video. Bye. Let me see if I can find it on my phone. Do 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 do. Why is it not working?